Hi everyone, am I audible? Can people hear me? Am I audible? Can people hear me now? Super, super. Just waiting to start. So just give me a thumbs up when to start. Can we start? It's, it's sharp six. So we're talking, we're talking about this, this very interesting book, Ghosts in Our Backyard, and this very interesting author we're going to be talking about very soon. So let me introduce to you, <clears throat> I am Dhruv Somani, and uh, I have uh, written my book on the Ramsey brothers. But here we're not talking about me, we're talking about uh, another person over here who's our uh, person uh, in, in demand today. That's Alicia Preeti Kriplani and who's the author of uh, Ghosts in Our Backyard. So Alicia is a Mumbaiite who's written this wonderful book, uh, Ghosts in Our Backyard. And uh, she tells us about the real life uh, encounters. Uh, supernatural encounters of uh, the Ra master of horror cinema, the Ramsey brothers, and uh, some of her experiences with the supernatural. And uh, yes, let me also tell you that she is the granddaughter of uh, uh, the prominent Mr. F. U. Ramsey. So let me invite uh, Alicia. Alicia, please join us. We're just waiting for Alicia to join us here. Hi everyone. Hi Alicia. Sorry guys, I think the spirits came and uh, <laughs> messed up my Wi-Fi connection. So I have to change. <laughs> I'm sorry about the delay. Okay, so Alicia, why don't you introduce? I've already done a little bit of introduction. Why don't you further go down and introduce yourself? Okay, so hi everybody. I'm Alicia Preeti Kriplani. And for anyone who's confused about why these two names, uh, it's in these, the tradition is to change our name to marriage. So we live life with an identity crisis. <laughs> okay, so uh, so essentially, uh, this is my book, uh, Ghosts in Our Backyard. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction through the book. It's the beginning of the book. Who am I? I believe in the spirit world. I have a trident on my palm. I was born in a car outside a crematorium. I'm a daughter of the Ramses, the first family of Bollywood horror films. I believe in ghosts because I have seen them. So has my mother, so has my daughter. Who am I? I'm the one who will give voice to the whispers of the world beyond ours. That world where our loved ones who have passed away watch over us as the unloved others watch us. Sometimes the dead reach out, crossing over the impossible. Their souls wander endlessly, some tormented with suffering, some tender with yearning. Their stories must be told. They must be heard. I am their story. So a warm welcome to you. Thank you. So I'm going to start with my first question, uh, um, Alicia. I mean, after reading the book, I've definitely realized that uh, there's a, a, you know, you've been very, very prominent about, uh, uh, you know, how much your mom has contributed to your writing this book. So, you know, I want to basically begin with, with your mom 
and uh, you know what has been her contribution uh, you know for your writing this book okay so first thing i'll say the creative genes <laughs> that would be uh, storytelling ability i think is from my mom uh essentially my mom over the years has seen uh, spirits and uh, you know she used to mention it and i used to like it's just taken my ma- in a matter of stride uh, uh you know and uh, the when i actually saw one i realized that wow like i've seen one now and my younger daughter also used to say she sees them that's yeah. when it's crazy and uh, then i just realized there could be a genetic thing out here so i got the idea that what do you think do you think the others in the family have seen it so she helped me speak to her you know family members and come up with the anecdotes that she remembered and everything so that would be i yeah. say a physical contribution the other thing was i think what set the seed of this book the way it is uh, that is you know is also that uh, mom got married young and uh, she actually gave the story for india's first horror film so when she asked my mama to see in the you know biography did you mention this and he said oops i forgot and that really stuck a chord with me and i said no matter which style i will write this book i will get my mom her due because it's a one due uh, that she yeah. truly deserves so i would say uh, it's all about her well it's a very big due actually it's a very big one thank you thank you i mean uh, uh, you know i think uh, that film basically um uh, you know uh, uh, actually do gaz zameen ke niche this how you plant a seed and you grow grow the tree you know i think that was the plant which actually grew the ram cells absolutely so the seeds were actually uh, you know given by by your mom and that so now that- i can see from where it's all coming <laughs> yeah true i just told her like obviously uh, and i said you know mom you've done everything for all of us and everybody knows the ramsey brothers but i'm going to try my best ma with this book that everybody also gets to know the ramsey sister sister <laughs> no 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 better way to say that actually yeah. and i'm grateful that i have been able to do that for her you know yeah. i'm grateful to the almighty that you know she's got to see this book and she's very excited <laughs> so absolutely okay we 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 go move on to our next question i have a very interesting um, question coming up for you see the major motive of your novel has been you know the family members and their encounters um, with the spirits and the ghosts so i mean was it always okay with them uh, you know to have these kind of encounters usually uh, a normal person would you know try and uh, you know shoo them away you probably get in touch with a medium you know you don't want to kind of uh, have these kind of um, uh, paranormal encounters in your life so were were they always okay were you always okay and your mom always okay with these encounters uh see for me like i said it's not that we have encounters uh, regularly or daily and uh, oh. it would be impossible to imagine that an entire family had encounters so right. the 50 plus ramsey clan right many compared to what the book has uh, that everybody had something possible right. uh, you know one of most people like to just bury okay it's luckily by the uh, you know fortunately it's not been like you know possession or stuff like this it's just yeah yeah people to start rationalizing it right and took it like you know it's part of her life so my mom i think has had the maximum followed by my daughter so okay it crossed their mind to do that you know for my mom it's like oh they must they are around no hey hey mm-hmm. okay so you will only do something like mediums and maybe exorcism mm-hmm. when you're being let's i say chased or it's extremely disturbing to you but these are one off okay when okay. i idea so they've never really troubled anybody i mean you know yeah. whoever's had these encounters i think they've never never gone through a bad yeah. experience yeah 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 and i mean that's what i mean so far and i think that it's a little unfair even to the spirits to you know put and maybe horror films have created this yeah. that you yeah. put all of them into like a category because sometimes it can just be lost souls of right. love so so basically you know it's a very very big uh, misconception which you are yep. breaking here that yep. it's not always when we talk yep. about uh, spirits or when we talk about any paranormal activity the first thing which comes to our mind ki hey bhagwan you know what's going to happen like you know yep. i'm screwed kind of a thing but but luckily i think it's a very very big mis- misconception you're clearing ki be they were always there but they were never to harm anybody 
Yeah, most of the time, exactly. And again, as far as malice goes, don't you see it in human? If you actually sit down, uh, everybody who's here watching, make an actual note of how many malicious uh, human beings you met, as compared to spirits. Absolutely, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. my point. Like, why are we so afraid? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Okay, so I'm coming to my next uh, question. That uh, how has your um, uh, psychic in intuition and ability to see ghosts? Uh, has it uh, uh, changed the way you see uh, horror films, or, or do, you, do you watch horror films, or you don't watch horror films? I love and, horror. <laughs> and since you've encountered ghosts yourself, um, uh, is there um, you know uh, any Bollywood uh, movie also which has really kind of uh, scared the shit out of you? Uh, so I would say that look, I don't go out. I would never go out seeking the spirits, honestly, because yeah. I. I forget the story. Just forget the fear factor of it. The bottom line is, if they're at peace, why bother them? Is how I it. So I, I would prefer uh, to just let it be. Whatever's happened to me has not been of my calling. I try to figure out why. Okay, mm. That's, mm. that's what this book is. It's a journey. Right. Uh, I get as scared of horror as anybody else, but those guys have the sound effects and everything. And whatever encounter I've had, trust me, the spirits have not come in with any sound effects <laughs> to start with. <laughs> The more subtle uh, so, thing. So you've never heard the 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 you know the very popular Ramse background music when you had a horror encounter. <laughs> Definitely. And I'm equally prone to getting those jump starts and everything like anyone else. But yeah. that for the effect that a uh, horror uh, you know uh, movie is showing. I know one film that scared me and my mom, who's quite a horror watcher, was uh, Salem's Lot. Uh, Stephen King's Salem's Lot many years ago. There was this okay. scene, and I never forgotten it. Okay, and I'll also tell you a skim that came in the Ramses. So this boy I is like this. Uh, I think you know uh, your Wi-Fi is uh, lagging a little, uh, Alicia. We, we just uh, try and Are reconnect. Now? Are we clear now? Can't hear you very clearly. Now can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, clear now. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You're done. You're good. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so what uh, in Salem's lot, the person was sitting and the window yeah. in this window, I still have not forgotten it. I'll be at least three decades old. And there's this mist. Yeah. Okay. And in that, the vampire comes through that mist. I cannot tell you how petrifying that scene was. And my mom too. We, we, both, we both would end up, okay. Both of us would end up in the night for at least a few nights. We were like, Raat ko aya wo mevla ha aya. Even Mujay, I so it was that petrifying. Stephen King, take a bow. And Orkon was a, and, another one. Yeah, that, yeah, that before, before, I mean, with, with, with uh, Stephen King's uh, taking a bow with Salem's Lot, I would also say that Ramses taking a bow with Bandarwaza, which was quite similar. <laughs> Each one of us has our fears. Also, I think it's the age factor. When you're younger, it's a yeah. lot more uh, fearful. But I know mom, who, like I said, was petrified of Virana. Actually, okay. and she said, I've never heard okay. about Virana. So, okay, wow. That's a testimony to uh, Virana. Okay, I know that uh, okay. I know Con gave me nightmares uh, in terms of that yeah. fridge every time I would think of it. <laughs> but I was young, very young. <laughs> so, okay. also that. Okay, so I'm um, coming back to the book now. Uh, you know, uh, I've read the book and, uh, I, you know, two of your stories, the initial stories written in your book, they take us to Ajmer. And, uh, you know, I want to ask you, you know, your maternal, uh, uh, you know, uh, what has been written in the book where all the uh, Ramsey brothers, when they were young, they'd gone to uh, this daddy's house in Ajmer. Uh, so I want to know, I want to ask you that, does that house uh, still exist? I don't think my, I did ask mom about this and about Dadi also. She says she doesn't have any idea. But what I did get to see, because I was, you know, for all these interviews and all these newspaper things, I went through mom's wedding album and she pointed out this is Dadi. Wow. So now I'm like actually seeing my great, uh, you know, uh, great aunt over there. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is Dadi. <laughs> so it, it's uh, interesting. I'm pretty sure all those places must have gone and it's so old. It's like you're talking about many, many years ago, you're talking yeah. about six, 60 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost 10, like she's in her 70s now. So it's a long yeah. time. 
it's a long time ago yeah. that's true when they were kids actually yeah, and yeah. also you know the the tomb of uh, abdullah khan you know that story was very interesting so would you would you ever like to visit the tomb no you know what i i uh, i don't i don't want to invite i feel see some people have a open field that invites this okay and it's a disturbing thing to be i'm not somebody i would never be like a, i never want to be a medium or a ghost right. or whatever i think it's a very disturbing and a very draining process right. uh, so right. i in fact if i think a place is haunted or whatever i'd keep away because i do believe that they come towards me i wouldn't want to do this i just don't want to tamper there right. basically they're drawn towards you yeah and i don't want to tamper in that area or anything of the sort i just like to keep it like dhruv you know in the book is also a personal journey like of a absolute turmoil after you know encountering a spirit what happened uh, to my our lives so i just don't i'm not comfortable at all i wouldn't i wouldn't go there oh like okay. you know thing with sham mama yeah. uh, when i told him about this story he was only 4 or 5 years old when it happened he says really beta so i said yeah mama and you know what he told me he said you know what now i remember i don't remember what happened but i remember sitting on this tomb and he oh. actually the details because i thought it was wonderful that you don't know your childhood and through right. this book yeah, you need yeah. to tell you, you had this encounter right right that's that's so, incredible incredible yeah. so, and so, i mean knowing knowing sham sham uncle and yeah. you know he you know how elaborate he was with everything the way he said the way he spoke i can i can truly understand as to what he must have told you you know i mean yeah that's, yeah it is research he did his research and he said i'm going to be doing my research in uh, this and see uh, dhruv that's the sad part from the starting of this book till now we've lost i've lost three uncles okay uh, it's what it is and the sad part is this is just a one off story it probably would have never been told yeah if i mean you know you're so much about the ramses but not this personal kind of yeah, definitely definitely no definitely uh, so midday when they interviewed me uh, the interviewer jane told me uh, jane bodge said she said you know what i call this book a horror memoir how many people say they have one yeah yeah absolutely right very true very yeah. true yeah okay i'm going to come to my next question now that's this is one of my favorite questions okay uh, so you know when you see the discography of films of the ramse brothers the palace uh, has played a very very important role in a lot of their films so you have uh, uh, you know virana purana mandir purani haveli you know the big ones the big hit movies all shot uh, you know at the palace so what i want to ask you that uh, have you ever visited the palace have you gone to the palace and or do you ever intend on going to the palace once dhruv i told you on this one no i haven't been there but i do realize one thing about the palace like i said is a palace must be really haunted because this was the mass haunting of the ramses if you understand okay in the book i've mentioned that my sister my mother my cousin my other cousin all had an experience there i didn't right. get i didn't get to ask the others but you're talking about a place that actually like the bungalow in in the book that was so powerful yeah that mass i'm going to that also yeah i i would not like i will not uh, i would not i like i told you look i don't want to tamper with anything to do with spirits yeah. okay or with anything even with a loved one you know a friend of mine uh, wanted to reach out to her mom and i said look if she's at peace you should let her be at peace right don't right. disturb them like i think uh, shamia's book don't disturb the dead i genuinely right. don't disturb them right 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 you know let them be right so but but i'll tell you uh, it's it's on my wish list very honestly uh, i mean uh, the the day if you're going to the palace we're going together <laughs> i'm going to be doing this okay uh, go to him go to dhruv <laughs> <laughs> it it was you know i used to i, I, I used to keep finding this place ki kahan pe hai kahan pe hai so a few of my office people had happened to go to ali bag and they went there to the murad uh, janjira uh, and they click photographs of the palace because earlier you know it was open to tourism and now it's not open to tourism so they click photographs from me and said you know this is a place you've been looking for for years so i said i have to visit this place one day and you see we also can't mention names easily because it's a property belongs to somebody and everything yeah. so obviously and one doesn't want to do that so which is why the bungalow whatever I, I, okay if yeah. you can 
Uh, if you ask me any difficult questions, I'm not telling you the exact location. Huh? Done, <laughs> done. <laughs> okay, now coming to the bungalow, as you just mentioned when we were, uh, you know, in the last conversation about the bungalow. So um, I've seen that you've mentioned several chapters in the book about the bungalow with your daughters having an experience there, uh, your mom having an experience there, your um, uh, sister having an experience there. Uh, I, I want to know that, uh, does the bungalow still exist today? Yeah, very much. It's, it's there. And, and it, you know, if you ever asked the bungalow, have you ever felt a calling back to the bungalow? No. Uh, honestly, uh, Dhruv, if you see this place, it's luxury galore. Okay? okay. You're talking about a gym. You're talking about a jacuzzi. You're talking about, uh, you know, levels of comfort. You're talking about sea facing. And yet there's a disturbance in you. that like a little reluctance to go there. Why I would agree. Not and unfortunately, like I said, it's saga continues. And it's crazy to have a 100% record for a place to basically mess up its inhabitants to this degree definitely tells you that houses definitely are carrying that energy. Honestly, I saw a program the other day, uh, you know, uh, which was interesting about buying your own island on YouTube. So I found it fascinating. And the reason was half these islands were available at like one poultry sum because they're all haunted. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. You can buy your island, but go stay on it. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Yeah. World, yeah. It. There's got to be something to those uh, places. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, why, why, why isn't somebody buying an island for 200, like for, you know, a crore, 50 lakhs, buy a whole yeah. island on the crore. sea? Yeah. But uh, it is there. There is, a, there is a fear there. There could be, see, the spirits may be residing for centuries, very old places, very old cities. They have that. They, they are carrying that history, right? Right, right. So tell me, like, you know the owner of the bungalow. We're not taking names here. So yeah. uh, just by any chance, this, this owner friend of yours invites you over for tea to the bungalow. Would you go? Um, I go out of curiosity. Yeah, because, but you know, honestly, there's a very uh, strong chance that everything just comes back, flashing back in your head. I go out of curiosity. See, mine came more as dreams. My mom had crazy. Yeah. I read mom, that. She stayed there alone with yeah. her sister. Okay, for weeks on end. And when she told me the story, I was done. You're like, don't you get scared, ma? And she just used to say, I tell them, please don't trouble me. I am sleeping now. <laughs> and she said, I'm say, sister, how can she get scared? And I'm just telling she you. Has that. Her genes, absolutely. <laughs> But she's, uh, she's got a, it's an amazing approach of acceptance, you know, mom also. Yeah. As a 10-year-old, if you have the guts to say, you are not terrorizing my siblings my, and my today. It yeah. shows you the funk she's had yeah, from absolutely. today. You know, yeah. and you read the book, you understand. And a lot of people have told me your mom's character is just the most amazing, lovable. Uh, yeah. And I said, oh, nice. I've, I've met mom, I've met auntie personally, and I know her, I met her so many times, so I can totally understand. She, she's got that in her, you know, she's yeah. a powerful woman. I gentle. Mean, That's what's amazing. Gentle. Yeah, powerful. yeah gentle, powerful. Absolutely. You yeah. said it right. It's a, it's a very strange combination. Mom is so serene and everything, and then powerful. You know, that belief is amazing. I'm it's very hard if, if actually somebody sees her and if, if you know, uh, they, they're going to say looks can be deceptive. I mean, absolutely. It's very hard to understand that she's going to be able to handle this part, you know. <laughs> much at ease, so much, at, you know, she's always been so calm about things and she'll just laugh it off completely. She you know? the, I'm telling you, the true blue Ramsey. But like I said, Rove, I just told her with this book, I said, Mama, you do realize that you've created the biggest Ramsey product. You gave birth to me outside a crematorium. I've got a Trishul on my palm. I said, uh -huh. you made sure that you stamped me with the Ramsey tag. <laughs> I agree. I don't, it couldn't have got more film me. It couldn't have got more film me. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Coming to uh, my, my next question. Uh, what uh, I found very interesting while reading the book I mean, um, I could, I got a little emotional also, you know, uh, because the book is not about ghosts, uh, about spirits or, uh, you know, we're not, talk the book basically is, is, is very spiritual. I personally felt, you know, when we had a conversation, when I was reading the book, 
and when i was halfway through and when you told me dhruv read it like you know take it as a homework and finish it and read it and i just I, it, it went to a different tangent altogether because it became highly highly spiritual so coming back to that i um, uh, you know i there's a chapter in the book by uh, the guardian angel yeah and uh, you've mentioned your uh, grandmother who you have referred to as bhabhi in the book and uh, do you ever, have you after her passing away have you ever felt uh, her presence uh, guiding you or protecting you or watching over you have you ever felt that because you know you you felt things so deeply you know i uh, felt it like i said during my daughter's birth and uh, when i had a troublesome pregnancy i did and uh, i like i told you when i bumped into uh, when uh, uh, you know somebody who deals with spirits told me that she's protecting me uh, please understand bro when i was born it was my this grandmother who carried me and wrapped me uh yeah so somehow it stands to reason honestly with writing this book till now i've never joined the dots of my own life okay. uh but now it's all come to say that none of this this was all designed in a way so to me i believe one thing when i'm in trouble in any times of trouble and like most people would be i just join my hands to you know our loved ones there and say please send us strength send us protection because we really need it so along with praying to the almighty i also pray to you know the spirits of our loved ones there because so i want to believe they are watching no, i know that's yeah i want to okay so right. and i it's a good thing it's it's like i beseech them i don't want them to come up come down and visit me but please help me please look after child or please look after you know what is happening around me that kind of thing right no no that's so true that's so true i love that thought really love yeah. that thought yeah. i mean honestly uh, uh, i i don't really think that uh, people uh, when we talk about ghosts and when we talk about spirits this is an angle which is completely missing from people yeah. you know we only we going the bollywood way ki you know ye bhoot hai and you know that kind of a thing but here uh, i mean there's a lot of spirituality there's a lot of attachment which is there and they're blessing us and they're watching over us taking care of us guiding us so you know there there are signs we need to follow which uh, i think most people forget about that you know 100% and and I'm, i'm telling you especially in times like this if you we are praying but this is praying to a to you know you know they love you you yeah, know they yeah. you yeah. hope they are listening and you say Absolutely. nothing else you're sending out positivity into the universe when you ask for yeah. that protection yeah to me, yeah it, right it's a win win right right so, yeah you have nothing to lose you have nothing to lose okay <laughs> uh, a quick uh, next question then which has been your most favorite ramse film and why um i actually liked uh i liked virana a lot myself oh. uh, i technically also very well made uh you know and uh, i also i did like Pur- honestly i think purana mandir also was good but if you ask me what fear factor maybe it was my age so i think darwaza and that orcon <laughs> darwaza ka that chariot still like if i think of ramse from that scared me the first thing i think of darwaza and that horse rearing and that guy's face my god it was it, i still remember yeah. and I, my mom what were you doing taking me for horror films at that young age <laughs> but it was like i said it was a family business so chalo yeah. everyone went see it <laughs> that was actually a cult film no i mean it was the first monster film in 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 bollywood okay nobody okay. actually made a monster film before darwaza and he was uh, he was ugly ugly right? he was ugly man it was so you know there used to be an ambulance standing outside every theater yeah. and i don't know if you know about this incident i, I guess uh, mom would know about it that yeah. uh, there was a, a person you know that there was a you know those radio programs used to be coming in those times mm-hmm. so you know you have these fearful voices and all and uh, you know the radio programs were, were heard by everybody and there was a contest which was going on that the 9 to 12 show in the night whoever watches it alone in the theater would be getting 500 rupees in those wow. days 500 rupees was a lot of money how interesting really 
so so uh, uh, i think a person went to see the film alone in the theater and he he got a heart attack and he he, he had to be hospitalized or he died or something like that watching darwaza watching darwaza alone in the theater in the night <laughs> I, I, no one. I was so scared. <laughs> so you know, the movie was banned. Really? The wow. movie was banned, wow. and then there was a legal case after which it was re-released. Wow! With permission I, of an ambulance standing outside. I knew you would give me more Ramsey news than I already <laughs> had. <laughs> Thank you. That really is is uh, fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So that's the story of that was actually and it was it was genuinely because i remember as kids when when we were um, watching purana mandir and we were watching the adam te khana and virana and all that darwaza was uh, a, a a video cassette which was very rare to to kind of locate because since it was a fan film there was a, a lot of extra work which needed to be done to watch it and people had dared us that don't see darwaza see everything but don't see darwaza so Ooh. there i totally agree so i'm so glad because i thought like darwaza has not been mentioned as much as the others correct very underrated so, very yeah underrated. it's underrated because i'm telling you if till today that scene is in my head actually i glanced at it that day on youtube and i still found it creepy so yeah. and uh, orcon is another one where my sister so i had a lot of fun i had a lot of fun with her because she's the complete opposite of me even now my her, my nephew he's only 7 he says masi i take your book and i go and put it in mom's face <laughs> to scare her <laughs> that's the only way he can bully jaya <laughs> and i'm really really laughing <laughs> i'm like okay <laughs> so does jaya jaya often go and open the ref- refrigerator and find a dead body there jaya is jaya is a different uh, she really is petrified okay. uh, it looks like my two daughters as well the uh, younger one who's just entered is like me and the elder one will be like walking she was actually scared of her own shadow <laughs> actually scared of her own shadow as a child she used to hop and jump and okay. i'm like what are you doing mom mom what is that black thing so i said it's your shadow <laughs> and the younger one mom which which horror film uh, can i see with you i can see them both bantering down there <laughs> so the younger one is uh, ramse and the elder one is uh, not ramse <laughs> i can't say karan johar <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay now my, uh, what about your least favorite which has been your least favorite film Uh honestly after the 90s and I think that's also because Nana also passed away yeah. uh you know and uh, Nani had gone and everything I think I enjoyed the pre genre a lot more Same here uh, I agree you know uh the reason being that uh times had changed uh there was a lot of exposure and i think we became cynical as well yeah. all of us uh yeah. today if you take a masala film of say manmohan desai and all it won't be easy to make them work anymore right uh you know this i mean to me i used to actually cry every time nirupa roy's eyesight would come back in a film because she banged her head you know every time people met i would feel so emotionally welled up it was okay. uh, it was a suspension of disbelief which we allowed but with more exposure to the world outside to international film and everything i think a lot of cynicism came in in all okay. of us okay uh, so you know uh, it was e- it was tougher to move people whether to scare them whether to do anything right. so i right. think the fag and uh, i would put it this way i can't say anything was a favorite i won't say i dislike anything everything is an effort of someone okay of course so to dislike somebody's effort is not a good thing everybody does their best but i think right. that for me the ramse era before the 90s was actual fear yeah, and for I mean, a lot of people at it at its peak yeah yeah it, at its peak yeah. and also z horror show i think did a good job oh uh, fabulous fabulous you know, yeah again like let's sit together and you know as a family let's get afraid i think it's wonderful bonding you know yeah. uh, and through another thing which is very interesting while i'm writing this book is the amount of people who told me they've conducted their romances in ramse films i find that fascinating It's like if you wanted the girl to, you know, cling to you, we took her to a Ramsey film, and I said, I love that sociology of romance <laughs> and horror. By the way, that's the two genres I've written. And yeah, I'm like, wow, <laughs> how do you connect these two? So it's interesting, you know. And I love when readers reach out, or even people come and tell me. I tell my mom every uh, person who reaches out and tells me we Ramseys, we did this. I go and tell my mom, and she's so happy to hear it. 
I agree. I agree. In fact, our college time also. I mean, we all used to go for these uh, horror movies, you know, with with you know all friends together because that that thing used to be happening. That okay, you like this particular girl, and she's going to be clinging and sitting next to you. Part. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm I'm sure people still do it. Uh, <laughs> I think the but simple. Today it's not, those... but it's probably conjuring or something. But people still do it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, and some things never change. I mean, if you actually technically go see any party, any New Year get together or something, it's like you know, uh, you know, you're watching a horror film together. Correct. You know, it's films, it's the popcorn, and you know, it's the resize where you are tucked in and you're kind of watching it together. I think and that's the fun. Guys are scared too. They may be clinging to the girls. <laughs> the girls of today. Many times I'm telling no, you this. Nowadays it's not being together. It's Netflix party, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix party. So, like I said, look, uh, horror, all genres of film, are a change of culture and sociology. So, the innocence, the kind of restrictions we had growing up, like to go out with a boy or whatever it is, to hide and do this. Right. Obviously, it was a totally different thing. Now, it's a different thing. Therefore, right. the the level of violence, the level of horror, has to be upped constantly. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. the horror is higher and higher and higher. So yeah, get yeah, yeah. more gruesome, more and more petrifying, and so on forth. Right. Okay. Okay. Coming to my next question, uh, you know, as your novel has been so beautifully written, um, you. You know, like uh, you know, to read out and um, uh, extract out of any of the chapters you like from the novel for us. What would you? I think you like the jogger, right, Thru? Well, I love it. I was I was imagining it when I was reading it. <laughs> okay. uh what i'll also do uh okay uh so i am going to uh, just set the pace uh, yeah. so look uh essentially what i've tried with this book through is though it's a story of horror film makers the book has poetry you know yes. that it has yes. uh, beautiful poetry formal, thank you and philosophy so yeah. what i've tried to do is mix uh, the elements of fiction with non fiction and poetry okay to create a blend that i would think would be pretty unusual in the horror genre right. right so i'm just going to read a little poem from uh the book and then i'll go to your chapter okay this poem is called alone okay the i living... love that i love yeah, that thank you thank you alone the living wipe each other's tears the dead weep but nobody hears their souls struggle seeing us in pain so they give up the chance to be born again we miss our loved ones who are gone but after a while life must go on for them there is no end in sight for us they rejected the eternal light so to me this poem was actually directly influenced by my mom who said things sometimes you know when her brothers passed away and i said mama she said you know i don't want to cry because if they are watching me and i think they are i'm going to be hurting them with all these tears because my tears you can wipe who's going to wipe their tears so alone was inspired by what my mom said the fact that rather than that my mom was more worried about the spirits of our loved ones watching us weep grieve and not being able to do anything right so it was a completely different uh, perspective you know to spirits okay now i'll come to the jogger uh, which yeah. is a story about uh, ganguram say Uh, this is a story i think has petrified many people uh, okay in the wake of pack up being announced earlier than usual the two of them decided to have dinner at a restaurant before heading back to the hotel along with a few other unit members the couple chose to walk it was a perfect way to walk off the after effects of a generous meal as the road was uneven and poorly lit the group trooped in a single file keeping an eye out for snakes or any other nocturnal animal that might cross their path the sounds of nature at night were amplified which made the journey even more nerve-wracking especially after a grueling shoot the operatic crickets were their shrillest best the stillness of the night was punctured periodically by the shrieking of bats hanging upside down from trees or flitting in the sky or a mischievous monkey waking from his slumber and letting out a sudden cry each sound sent shivers of alarm down the spine a flutter here a rustle there all of it adding to the unnerving mood disturbing the tranquility of the walk the air was nippy sauntering along each one in the group soaked in the mystery of the night 
Some picking up pace, eager to find their beds. Lena and Gangu were trailing at the rear. After chattering for a bit, a quiet descended on the group. The noisy night suddenly turned as silent as the jagged stones around them. Not one cricket could be heard, nor a bat flapping any more. The forest and its inhabitants had turned mysteriously mute. A gust of frigid air surrounded Gangu and Veena. It was Veena who saw it first. Her hair stood on end as she realized that there was something beside her, matching its pace to the crumpled stride, quickening its steps to fall in line with them. Having spent months of her married life on a Ramsey movie set, in proximity to all things unnatural, a primal sensibility of self-preservation warned her to look straight ahead. Her heart lurched in panic, and she stumbled while hastening to move closer to her husband. Once close to Gangu, she looked back furtively from the corner of her eyes. What she saw was enough to turn her legs into jelly. Oh my God! She clasped her husband's shoulders as words froze in her mouth. Now, for the rest, you read the book. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, please. Everyone should 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 read this book. It's a must. Written at four a.m. at night. Every story is written after two a.m. at night, completely alone. So, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and I'm. I think I don't look. Flow of writing only at that point of time. Hundred percent. It's like Bhabhi. <laughs> Lie, this is missing. That is missing. Mom, can you do this? <laughs> so yeah. You know, what I really wondered, um, uh, you know, Alicia, is that you have written the book so beautifully that at Thank some you. point of while while reading it, I was also getting a little affected, and uh, you know, I could visualize a lot of things in my mind. Um, can we expect a nice horror film script from you in the future? Why not? Never. Say I think it. needs it. You know, we really need it. Never say never, uh, Dhruv. I never even thought I would ever write this book or anything. Ram said it wasn't even part of my life plan. Okay, I'm just right. flowing. Honestly, I never say never. Now, uh, wherever I really say wherever the spirits are leading me, I'll go there. I I yeah. would love. Uh, my I mom hope I hope uh, the spirits lead you there, and we right. we we get a very nice uh, horror script, and that's how you know the 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 Ramsey sister. <laughs> is going to you know life comes a full circle so yeah. the ram sister will again eventually with her uh, with her daughter would give us a very nice horror script awesome. and thank you. that's made into a film um, uh, some day thank you but i promise you one thing it'll be scary but it'll be highly emotional as well because i know one thing <laughs> horror <laughs> emotion that goes hand in hand <laughs> yeah. i mean that That's the only way public uh, will will love the film. That emotion yeah. has to be yeah. there. The connect is very important. It has to be there. Thank you. Thanks, Dhruv. Okay. Um, I want to ask you this: that if you ever get an opportunity to remake a Ramsey film, which one would you like? I pretty much like the idea of remaking Orcon. Uh, uh-huh. The reason being that the others have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, thakurs and whatever and whatever. I'm not very sure. But I, since I love uh, character definition, yeah. uh, a lot in Orcon that I could define. Uh, you know, I love delving into the darkness of character and everything. And in that film, I think uh, the characters are not many. Therefore, the yeah. definition is deeper. Right. You know, and that's the one I would look at uh, so, doing. So Orcon was again a very, very underrated film Absolutely. because it's not per se a horror horror film. It's Absolutely. more of a thriller, and yeah. uh, it. Amazing songs. Orkon was actually known for its songs. No, and that's what I'm saying. There are so many. You see, uh, I think Ruv, I think Ramsey films can be fully remade. The only difference that you make here is that you go character intensive now. Uh, when yeah. you're looking at the Hill House, or you're looking at uh, the new Psycho, uh, you know, a Bates Motel, that is, and so on and forth. What's the difference now? It's an old, uh, it's an old uh, wine in new bottles. But these new bottles are very clearly defined with character. Character. So yes, I believe that that's the key to remaking any older uh, film is the definition of character now. You see, even in even in Hollywood, uh, they are eventually remaking all the old films. Absolutely, you know? we Absolutely. had Kings Eight, which came in nineteen ninety one. Eventually, it was remade, and it was a huge, huge hit again. You know, so, so superheroes. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah. Dark Knight uh, is the one that brought in uh, the superhero being James Bond. They, right what's the new what is the new bond they're all vulnerable they're all humane they're all multi-layered 
Absolutely. Very so related to us. Yes, and that is the change from old school to now, yeah. uh, where now character is everything, in my opinion. Plot is important, right. but right. now character is extremely important. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm coming to my last question, and I'm going to trouble you a little over here. <laughs> Uh, I think I have the right to trouble you now. So uh, this is, we're just playing a, a small uh, rapid fire with you. So I'm going to just ask you one liners uh, where you need to just quickly, you know, you have to be very rapid and you need to be uh, give, giving us some, some fire with your answers. It's a very, very, very small thing I have done for you. So let's begin. Thanks. The first one, tell me, Purana Mandir or Virana? Uh, choose your favorite one. Virana. Why? Uh, more, uh, it was different relatively. Like I'd seen the, uh, you know, the, the entire, those are, that's more typical Ramsey. I think I like the idea of the seductress and all. It appeals to my feminine, feminist side, by the way. <laughs> you wanted, you wanted the, you know, this one to be the Churel and not the male. <laughs> I love, I love the feminist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, you know, Arti Gupta or Jasmine, who do you like more? Who do you prefer? I think both suited the roles they were. And honestly, I'm not trying to be a diplomat. Uh, yeah. But for, I think Arti Gupta's role could be played by someone else. I think Jasmine really suited the role. She was as okay. pale as a ghost. And you could imagine her, you know, being somebody who is actually going to attract the men with a very mysterious uh, element. I think Jasmine... Right. And you, you, you know, you'll believe that after Virana, Jasmine had such a huge fan following. I mean, if she would have been around, she would have been to a different level altogether. Hundred, yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Yeah. She did beautiful, beautiful casting there. Absolutely, yeah. And do you know, na, the earlier cast of Virana was not Jasmine. It was initially Rajan Sippy and Roshni. Really? There was an actress called Roshni. I don't know if you remember, but Long the original of Virana when it was announced in the trade magazines it was Rajan Sippi and Roshni. So what made him change his mind? I guess uh, they were mesmerized after seeing Jasmine. <laughs> so let, let me ask Dhruv about uh, my uncles. What, <laughs> that, that's a true scholar. <laughs> yeah. okay, the next one. We're going to go, the, go to the next question. Um, since you like uh, Jasmine, I mean today if Virana is remade, hmm. who do you think can play the role of Jasmine? Amongst the current uh, actresses? That's a good question. Uh, it's going to be somebody with uh, hypnotic eyes. Uh, I would like, I can see Shraddha Kapoor doing this. I don't know, just off the cuff. Uh, you know, I think she's got that, uh, she's got such an innocent face. Yeah. Uh, got nice eyes. And I can yeah. imagine like turning <laughs> into this. You know what okay. I mean? I wouldn't yeah. look at it. Her as a seductress. In fact, I'd look at her as a very simple. Yeah, yeah. I got I, it. I got as it. Simplest, simplest, uh, she's like, I thought of somebody helpless rather. That, so it's, uh, it's basically more twisted. You know, like people are going to expect the unexpected. Yeah, From yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're a vulnerable face. And, uh, you know, that's what came to mind. Absolutely. Uh, like Alia Bhatt, she's very, very sweet. But I would think Shraddha has that, those eyes that may yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. Sparkle, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what came to mind. Okay, next one. Uh, yeah. Which, according to you, is the best film uh, of uh, your mama, Keshu Ramse, uh, in the Khiladi series? Uh, I like Sabse Bara Khiladi. Sabse Bara, I, I like it too. Yeah, I, I loved it. I like it. Khole Tere Ladki, Khole Tere Dil Ki, Pyaar Wali. I really liked it. I think mama, I mean, Keshu mama, hats off to him with that kind of vision, you know. What a, what a thing, uh, you know, I was talking to my mommy that day to just say, you know what, I'm leaving this and I'm, Piping my own tune. How many people can do that? Right, he, right. He truly really needs a film all to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, Khiladi had such a strong uh, yeah. Ramsey stamp also, if you see. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they kill, they try to pretend to kill Akshay Kumar and they hide him in an ice box. And that you know, exactly. the Kulshan Grover comes in and you know, he's kind of checking around. I think it, it kind of evoked a lot of fear while watching that film. I love that film. That's exactly what I'm saying. I, I love the whole uh, blending that you know was done over there you know yeah 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 i i think uh, somewhere down the line i was i was expecting that answer i mean i personally love the film very much i'm coming to you for ramsey lessons huh, after this talk <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, 
um, I want to ask you this question about all your mamas. You know, who amongst all the brothers, as the Ramsey brothers, uh, had got crazy and horrific ideas bubbling in their head since you've interacted very closely with them? You know, uh, from my experience, and though it's been quite some time now, I always remember the dramatic one, uh, though the others were more quiet or whatever, was Tulsi Mama. Really? Yeah, he reminds, even he reminds me a lot of my mom because uh, my mom's quiet, but my mom even now talks about things in terms of episodes. Like when I talk to her about my book, she'll say, uh, Ye maine episode padha baut hai. <laughs> I'm like, Mama, chapter, <laughs> episode. So Tulsi Mama's eyes would gleam. Oh, okay. Uh, when he would be speaking, you know, of camera shots, of angles and everything. Uh, Kumar Mama had this very silent, uh, I would say, intellectual approach. Uh, to it. He was a writer, okay? Right. Very right. soft spoken. And you know, the discussions would be uh, very different. It was a very firm yet soft uh, discussion. Even Keshu Mama, yeah, come to think of it, Keshu Mama, passionate, you know, where you know, you're know you mesmerized watching that passion for something, you know? Right, right. So I would think it would be them. Tulsi Mama, actually. Yeah, Tulsi Mama, like all his gleaming eyes, you know, uh, yeah. of, you know, the shot that is to be taken. So does it, you know, did it ever happen like this that, you know, Tulsi uncle is like talking and everybody else is listening? I think it pretty much was forced to happen. Others were too soft. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> okay. Do you know? But he was the, he was the face, uh, I think, of the Ramses later. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was in touch with everybody and everything. I think it went with his persona. Yeah, yeah. I think both Tulsi uncle and Sham uncle, yes, yeah. were the faces. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. You're the so face. everybody as a family, but they were the main prominent faces. Yeah. Shamama very quiet, uh, you know, yeah. even very gentle, very, very quiet. Yeah. Okay. So. okay, okay. Coming to my last question here today. Um, one English film, uh, you know, of today, which you feel the Ramses would have definitely made if they were around today? I know what I would suggest they make, Hereditary. Oh, okay. Absolutely, uh, I mean, it's a recent film, one of the films that frightened me. Actually, I've seen it. And I think it was absolutely like, wow, man, what, like, I'm, I'm in this crazy world right now. I really yeah. like it. Uh, I wish they would pick up something like this. I like this, uh, you know, uh, firstly, I like the idea of the, you know, the cult. I mean, I would spoil the film for you, but Hereditary. I would think Hereditary would be lovely. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so we are over with a rapid fire now, and uh, we should uh, go to the audience. I think if if anybody wants to ask you any question, if if people want to ask you any questions over there. Thank God I passed Dhruv's exam. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. It's vice versa. <laughs> You're the authority on Ramses. <laughs> okay. Uh, questions. Uh, we can't see a lot of questions. Uh, do you have any plans to write another book? 101%. Uh, as long as there are readers, I'll keep writing. I keep saying nobody wants to read, nobody, but I have to write. Thank you, uh, Isha, very much. Thank you so much. 100% and God willing. And what would be the genre? I, I'm actually confused, honestly, about this. I've got four books in the running right now. Uh, okay. Or I started. I just know one thing: it's going to be. Uh, it's always going to be reaching out uh, to a person's heart. Whether okay. I write, or also it's going to have an emotional take to it because that's how I write with commiseration. Uh, okay. Okay. And so I think there was another question somebody asked earlier. What I was reading. What are you uh, reading at the moment? I I loved uh, recently. I read a book called uh, Eleanor uh, Oliphant is fine. I really loved that book. Uh, it's a cycle. It's about uh, the psyche, and you're in someone's head. And I think it was a masterpiece of actually being in someone's head, being an observer in their head, and you want to warn them that listen, <laughs> you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so that was my read, which I really enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed as in it, it, it was good writing for me. Okay. But, okay. Um, you have any experience, anything while writing it or remembering the past? Uh, yeah, hi, uh, CJ. Uh, it's an interesting question. I I had one encounter only, and this was this after warning from my mama that tell her not to write and this in the night and do all of this. I did have one thing I won't share who it was because I, I just want to keep it as a personal 
thing. But at one point in one story, my computer, my laptop just refused to work. Uh, every time I went to another paragraph, it would work. It wouldn't allow me to write beyond till I deleted those three, four lines. Uh, it did not allow me to type. So I, I think know. them telling me don't write this. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, and I just let go of that. I'm glad I did because I listened because so that's yeah. what. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, I think there's another question. One book you would suggest to all. Uh, it depends on the genre, uh, Rini or Rini. I'm not very sure, but I do believe that uh, to me, the Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini uh, is a book that to me appeals to me on every level. It is so humane and so heartfelt. In fact, I uh, since I am an emotional, I, I like uh, like I write with a lot of emotion. When I read Kite Runner, I mean, I have actually sobbed. and i felt so good that a writer could make me you know sob so i had actually said that i hope to move people one day the way khalid husseini has moved me uh, so i would recommend that as a read uh, also love uh, elif shafak's uh, 40 rules of love two books that i absolutely adore there are tons mm-hmm. of writers okay but the ones that stayed with me are these two uh, poetry i would go with rumi uh, all the way i would read the prophet uh, as well these are just books that i cherish okay the another question that do you ever get scared while uh, you know writing your own stories imagining and writing your own stories uh no no i don't because i have not imagined the scenes i was more imagining i more imagine what the person went through mm. what was for them uh so mm. i'm crafting that uh, rather than being afraid of that because you see what i received from family members was two lines three lines five lines to build that into a fully fledged story right right imagine what went on in their head what must right. it have so when you're busy doing that there's really no time to be afraid in all honesty yeah 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 and i mean why be afraid i mean you have nothing to you know be afraid of and and i like i said the one thing i must tell you that through with i mean i'm very grateful to harper collins i'm grateful to red ink my agency that nobody asked me to add any masala because that was the one thing i told them i said please i'm writing absolutely authentic and true i'm not trying to frighten people i'm trying to bring hope to them okay so whatever i've written is absolute truth and this is my pact with the spirits however foolish i may sound to you it's my pact with the spirits i actually told them i will represent you with utmost honesty whether this book ever gets published or not but anyone who tells me to add masala to make it not authentic i'm not writing a ramse horror way this or whatever i am writing the truth okay so i mean i'm so glad that uh, uh, alisha priti kriplani was not uh, pressurized into adding an item number oh, not at all thank you to harper for that and uh, my editor bushra who was on the same page with me completely i said because then i believe i something may because then i'm exploiting the spirits for sale right. you right. If you understand there's a principle behind the book there's going right. to be exploitation of the spirits or what experiences my family or i have been through this is right. authentic and real right. you you want to call me what you need to you want to tell me i'm doing this for whatever that's your perspective mine is very simple this happened right to right. share it with you i hope it brings you hope mine is not to frighten you mine is yeah. to teach acceptance yeah. very true very true i mean i i i vouch for that i totally vouch for that after reading the book i totally vouch for that thank you thank you okay. there's another question that which movies did you watch while growing up i saw all sorts of movies uh, are you talking about specifically horror if they want to know that uh, i guess i mean it does not it's not specified okay so i used to love now that's another generation Uh, okay, so I used to love Crazy Boys. I used to love Terence Hill and Bud Spencer. I used to actually, I still love kung fu movies. I love Bruce Lee. I used to watch my dad uh, watch it, and I used to sit with him, and then my husband, and uh, you know, watch it. And I love, I love martial arts. Yes, I think they're asking horror. Which horror movies did you watch? Oh, I saw tons. I think I saw everything from Omen to Friday the Thirteenth. You name it, I saw it. My mom, mom, and I uh, would binge watch these for nights on end. and then when i would be scared i'd go and cuddle up in her bed and <laughs> cling to her <laughs> so, i think we all did 
<laughs> you know, so, yeah, it was like let's petrify ourselves. Uh, my favorites would be I loved Omen. I think Omen was brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. The sad part today that Omen is not available. I mean, I know tons and tons of people uh, who want to see Omen. My daughter's going to watch Omen, but it's really? not. Really? Yeah. What absolute masterpiece of fear! I yeah. think it was brilliant. The sound effects. So Omen, guys, is worth a watch. Friday the Thirteenth, the series is great. Nightmare on Elm Street started very well. Okay, yeah. petrifying. These are all characters that stayed in recent times. I would say the Ring, brilliant. Okay, Hereditary is great right now. Shows Haunting of Hill House. I absolutely loved it. Bates Motel. I really liked. Uh, I don't I know if you've seen this one. Have you seen Drag Me to Hell? No, I haven't. Good. Oh you my did. God, you have to watch. I remember I had a conversation with uh, Sham Uncle about this. Oh, really? I'll see that. Thank you. He had thoroughly enjoyed watching it. But the cult ones that they need to see, that the new generation needs to see, is to start with The Exorcist, Omen, Friday yes. the Third, Halloween. You know that is uh, the beginning of Hollywood oh. horror. You need birds, Hitchcock. Yeah. You yeah. need to see birds. Another yeah. psycho. Yeah, no, psycho. Be psycho. Cycle, yes. You know, it, it was amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, that is that was like actually coming up with psychological trauma at yeah. a time where psychology was not even a field that was that well known. You know how brilliant is that? Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, you know, guys, you who was watching, whether you're writing or reading or anything, any creative pursuit, please go back to the classics first. Yeah. When you go to the classics, you go to the tenets of any art. So you know whether you're a musician, listen to the classics. Whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're a reader, please do throw in classics into it. Okay, uh, to get your core right because they got it right. Absolutely, right? they got it bang on. Yeah, and now what it is is just upping. You're just upping the levels. You're just raising the ante right now. So don't throw out old school. Okay. Oh really? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I just said so it's a little on that's YouTube. That's news. That's good news. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. So as we come to the end of our session, uh, uh, okay, could you please repeat the name of your book? Of course. Yeah. It's Ghosts in Our Backyard. Uh, okay. Ghosts in Our Backyard. And the name was instant and impromptu. It just of came. Papa agreed. Everybody agreed, and I was like, "Lovely! This was, it was the name that had to be." Right. I hope you got it, Nachiket. <laughs> okay. So as we come to the end of our session, it's uh, yeah. I think we are done. I don't think we have any more questions now. Okay. I have a question so, of you, Dhruv. Yeah, tell me. What is your favorite? uh my favorite ramse movie was definitely purana mandir because uh okay. i remember i give you a very small exam uh, uh, you know small incident about purana mandir that uh, uh, you know purana mandir at that point time we used to have a man coming in our area i mean you were also there at aura man i don't know if you were there but um, mm -hmm. there was a sharma local guy who used to come with video cassettes and uh, yeah, so yeah i remember so purana mandir was a lot in demand so i Being such a huge Ramsey fan, I was after him. He had a Purana Mandir lakhe do, Purana Mandir lakhe do. I was nagging him since a week already. You know, ki kab laoge, kab laoge. Friday ko dekhna hai kaise bhi. You know, and I convinced all my building people to watch it with me. <laughs> and uh, he got me Purana Mandir, and we used to pay ten rupees for a video cassette on hire at that point of time. But he knew how desperate I was to watch Purana Mandir that he charged me thirty rupees for hiring. <laughs> But I really. The irony was that I we were not allowed to watch Purana Mandir because Purana Mandir released on 19th October in 1984. Okay. Wow. So so at that point of time, Indira Gandhi had passed away. She was assassinated and she passed away. And uh, the day we were supposed to watch Purana Mandir, Indira Gandhi's funeral was coming on uh, DD National, and all our folks wanted to watch the funeral. And we were not having space to watch because everybody had a VCR in the one VCR in the house. Yeah, so we were yeah. out to watch Purana Mandir anywhere. 
and uh, so we we did a pact we that each one convinced their folks for half and half an hour to you know i mean give us a tv to watch it so purana mandir was actually seen half an hour at somebody's house on the first floor half an hour at somebody's house on the second floor <laughs> half an hour at my house on the third floor you know that's how we <laughs> watching purana mandir how good is that yeah cool and that experience <laughs> forget because none of us could actually uh, you know go to the loo alone in the night that was the fear it had created I, that what? sorry the stairs <laughs> i mean that was still okay but i mean we it was we were we were shit scared down in the building we all were discussing that we were all feeling scared to go to the loo alone that was the impact of purana mandir so it always stands as a as a hot favorite of mine no i know and uh... I'm telling you, horror. I look at every laughing out there. The thought of watching it, you know, you're a very privileged generation. Trust me. Uh, all of my grandmother and I, my grandmother, we because we wanted to see films so badly. Uh, every year, there used to be in uh, a, you know, on the in the on the road, they used to put up the screen, and my grandmother and I used to sit with all the staff and the domestics from all the buildings, uh, sitting over there and watching a movie in the middle of the road <laughs> during Ganpati. Yeah, yeah, Ganpati. So, guys, I have to uh, introduce uh, y'all to Dhruv. Dhruv is such a horror buff that he's done a whole book called A Touch of Evil, four volumes, and one whole volume is dedicated to the Ramses. So, I mean, I'm telling you, he's a walking encyclopedia. Please, please be aware because this is a truly passionate Ramses fan. Okay, and must uh, read his. Uh, if you're interested in horror, he is a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> of horror down to dates like i was very sheepishly saying now even remember 1984 my god <laughs> so so uh, i think uh, thank you so so much dhruv uh, this was this was my pleasure all the way discussing and going back in time and thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it uh, thank, you. thank you and uh, kitab khana thank you so much for hosting us aap collins for uh, standing by uh, us this book and everything and uh, guys may the spirits be with you please don't be afraid i'm uh, genuinely don't be afraid okay uh, just be strong be brave uh, somebody gave me a line yesterday uh, where there is fear there is no faith i think it's a oh. beautiful they just yeah. gave me yesterday and i said that's a beautiful line so just keep that in okay uh, okay Take care. God bless. And uh, please, anybody wants any anything, any more uh, information, please get in touch with me. And uh, you have the walking encyclopedia of horror in front of you. I'm sure you can uh, get in touch with him. Yes. Yeah, so till we meet again, uh, see you, everyone. We thoroughly enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for being here, all of you. Thank. You. Thanks. <laughs>